My name is Nick, and this is a tour of my Ron Polk inspired tool trailer. Just want to give a little context before I do an exterior walk around, then we'll come back inside. I've had one tool trailer before this. It was a 7x14. I worked out of that for 11 years. Um, it had like two shelves in it, and then just, you know, a bunch of job boxes and tools and cases and everything. It was very, very. Uh, unorganized and difficult to work with compared to where I'm at now. Uh, I've used my tool trailers mostly for uh, HVAC uh, residential remodels, so like AC add-ons and furnace retrofits and that kind of thing. My daytime job was that when I got my first tool trailer, and so my trailers have always been side work trailers. Um, then I started doing home flips and remodels here about five years ago and so I was getting more tools and then I was having to move stuff in and out of the 7x14 trailer to get the job done that I needed and so I decided I needed to upgrade and did what any guy does you go on YouTube and find out what everybody else is doing and that's when I found Ron's videos and he was super informative so what you see in my trailer was mostly inspired by his ideology of making sure you can get to the tools quick uh, not having to take straps or you know, take them out of cases and all that other stuff, and then and knowing right where to go to get them. Um, yeah, so let's go outside, and I'll give you an external tour. So this is the trailer that I upgraded to. It is a 2017 Continental Cargo Elite, uh, 20 feet long, 8.5 feet wide. I did add uh, 3 extra feet on the tongue. I got this one from Fox Trailers out of Post Falls, Idaho from the owner's name is Chad. Great guy if you guys are looking for a trailer. Uh, this was a custom order so I did change a few items from factory. For instance, the, the uh, three feet extra on the tongue. Uh, all the supports in the walls and underneath are on 16 inch centers instead of 24. Uh, obviously it's the screwless siding. Uh, I added a foot of height so it's 7 foot 6 interior height. Uh, all the chrome and stuff that's on I really didn't want all the chrome, but I wanted alloy wheels and the cost to do just alloy wheels compared to doing the chrome package. It was like $50 more just to do the wheels than it is to do the whole, whole chrome package. So uh, Chad talked me into the chrome. If I were to go back, I'd probably just pay the extra 50 bucks and get just the alloy wheels, but either way. Uh, on the exterior, the only thing I've really added to the exterior is a motion light next to the door there. One of the upgrade features was the... The uh, integrated hasps on the latches as opposed to using a padlock or something. I've been super happy with how that's worked out. Um, I haven't had anybody try to break in or get through those. I've had, My previous trailer, I had them cut the locks a couple times and whatnot. If I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't do the extended tongue. I was thinking at the time I'd do a generator, but I haven't really needed it at all, so I haven't done that. I keep a Proven Industries tongue lock on it. Big fan of the Proven Industries tongue locks. I have them on all my trailers and, and I haven't had any stolen since I switched to those. On this side I did add a access door. When we go inside you'll see my air compressor. I have a 100 foot hose reel and a 50 foot electric reel that come out of that. So whenever I need to hook up to air or power outside uh, for my tools I just open the door and pull them out and good to go. And then at the back of the trailer there you can see I have a my 30 amp motor base plug so it's an RV style 30 amp plug for powering the trailer. The other thing with ordering it from the factory I was able to do a 9,900 pound GVRW. It rides on 7,000 pound uh, axles, Dexter torsion uh, suspension. They're they're awesome and yeah, very smooth nothing inside jumps around or anything but if you've done any work in Washington and had to deal with the DOT if you can license your trailer for under 10,000 GVRW, you're, you're ahead of the game. Uh, so that's what I had him do. Had him do exterior lights. The other big upgrade on the trailer was I had it completely insulated. So walls, ceiling, floors, all insulated, doors. Uh, I had him add a heat pump on the roof so it has heat and AC. And then on the doors, my previous one, I know Ron's a big you know, ramp guy. But I really do, for my work, prefer the barn doors. When I go to my wholesaler and stuff, they're able to forklift materials right into the back. So my furnaces and heat pumps and everything, they're able to forklift them right in the back. And it makes it super simple. I just come up with my dolly at the back and tip, tip them off, and it works great. So I like the doors. But 
on my previous one the doors were just plywood and after a couple years if you get moisture or anything in there they're real kind of floppy they don't hold real well and then with the just two hinges on each door was kind of rough so these doors are actually an aluminum frame that they sheeted on both sides so they're super stiff and then i had them add additional hinges so there's four hinges per door as opposed to two hinges per door and they've been they've been amazing the only other thing i had uh done before i started the interior reno is i did have them line x the inside the floor had them go up the wall like five inches and then i had them do the entirety of the rear doors and the rear doors is mostly for waterproofing like if it's pouring down rain or something and the doors are open uh, it keeps you know that way the wood doesn't get soaked with water the sheeting and uh, helps keep it you know nice and then the interior it's been it's been amazing I'd do that again 10 times over any time I talk to anybody about buying a trailer if they're using it for work I always tell them to have the floor line next it's a great product and it's it's really been uh, good I think on the inside so that's it for the exterior of the trailer um, Again, it's it's the last Continental model I had. I had for 11 years and didn't have any issues. Um, this one here is the upgraded model, so it's a single piece roof, uh, and again, the screwless sides and stuff. And I think it'll last me a good long time. I didn't go aluminum um, for two reasons. One, obviously, the first one was cost. Like aluminum's way more money. And my other trailer, having it 11 years, it was steel, and I didn't have any problems with rust or anything like that. I'm on the east side of Washington, so the other side of the state from Ron, but uh, I don't have any issues with rust on my last trailer, so it wasn't a big deal for me to go steal on this one. And then I pull it with a diesel truck because I have uh, flatbeds and dump bed trailers as well that I pull, so I need the diesel anyway, so weight wasn't really a consideration. As it stands with all my tools in it, I scale right now about 9,400 pounds uh, loaded with no materials, so that's just my tools. And the trailer itself and so it's it's not bad on the diesel to to pull around and get stuff done so let's open up the doors and check out the inside so this is the inside of my tool trailer and as you can see I stole Ron's ideas on the tool dividers, and uh, I've really enjoyed that as far as being able to just come in, grab a tool I need, you know, when I'm done, I just bring all the tools back here. They all have their own home, and it makes it simple, neat, and clean. Uh, I'm not a cabinet builder, uh, so I was looking for an alternative way to do the drawers as opposed to building all the cabinets, and when going through the process of ordering the trailer and finding stuff, Sears had a big sale on these boxes. They were like 60% off, so they were like 400 bucks a box. And they've been incredible. I love them. They uh, have a, a hinged handle, so when they slide out, they got that little like grippy deal there, so whenever they go in, they latch. And if you don't pull up on it, they won't come out. So I don't have to lock them or anything when I travel. They, they all stay closed, all the tools and them stay where they're supposed to be. So I've enjoyed that. I did get one of the Husky boxes from the from the depot uh, just because I needed something longer than what that was. And so for like screwdrivers and stuff, we did the cutouts and keep everything where they need to be. With uh, doing home flips, my wife and I, we move all the time. Because uh, we end up usually living in our houses for a little while. Um, so this is like my garage as well. I don't have, I don't move any tools anymore like I used to at the smaller trailer in and out. Everything's in here all the time. So all my sheet metal tools, all my woodworking tools, all my mechanics tools, everything's in the trailer all the time. Which has been super nice anytime I have a project, you know, just hook up to the trailer and go and I know I have it all. Um, the totes are great in my opinion the thing i kept a few from my old trailer because like the top one there's like electrical supplies and that's just miscellaneous stuff like smoke detectors and some remodel boxes you know just anything that comes up that i might need to do a little bit of electrical work i have one there that's labeled fasteners and caulks so i keep all my caulk tubes in there 
And I did that for two reasons. One, it keeps them organized and clean. But secondly, if I do decide to unplug the trailer and it's freezing out on the side of the state, we get down to zero quite a bit in the winter. I just grab that one tub, take it inside, and then that keeps all my caulks from freezing. So that's nice. But then, you know, like miscellaneous hardware, miscellaneous paint supplies and stuff in there. Kind of have this cubby built out for uh, shovels and rakes and brooms and stuff. Anything, you know, long that can just go in there. Pry bar sits there. And then on this side up top, this bin is a 10 foot bin. It goes the whole length behind all the shelves. So like 10 foot materials, like right now I got conduit and some PVC and stuff in there. And then the one below it, this is a five foot deep cubby. And then there's another five foot deep cubby from the other side, thermostat for the heat pump. So heat and AC. And then uh, back here, I keep my nitrogen and then I have some a CO2 tank, see if we can get a shot of that. Yeah, down there there's a CO2 tank for that sort of stuff. Another proven industries lock for a different trailer of mine. Underneath that I have some um, saw horses, uh, refrigerant tanks, recovery machine, vacuum pump, that sort of thing. Batteries, wipes, staples, you know, just all sorts of miscellaneous stuff in the little black tubs. Try to keep stuff labeled. Do a pretty good job. Gloves and first aid kit. Um, torch kits down here this this little cubby goes out through that door so i have my hose reel and an electric reel my air compressor so i just open up that little door and pull out what i need for air hose or electric and go to town the electric's got a three-way deal a little drill press just for miscellaneous projects that's kind of my power center up there i got uh the what noco noco however they pronounce that charger that keeps the two 12 volt batteries that are on the tongue topped off um, all my lighting is 12 volt and then one of these flashlights so this flashlight up here is a 12 volt chargeable flashlight it's just plugged in there and then like my speakers uh you know charge off that and it's got usb so i can charge my phone or whatever um and then the breaker box so it's a 30 amp service to the trailer that's got three 20 amp breakers one runs the ac and heat and then the other two one breaker just I have on my for exterior cord and air compressor runs off just one breaker 20 amp and then the other 20 amp breaker runs the length of my workbench uh, for all the outlets that are down there so uh, I always keep my Dremel plugged in you know for any trimming on anything or anything like that just some this is called drive if you're an HVAC guy. It's used for putting ductwork together, but I just stood it off the little shelf there so I can put my tape measures on there and safety glasses and hang miscellaneous things on there. I got these little magnet deals, so for stuff that I use a lot on my impacts, you know, like nut drivers and screwdrivers and stuff, I can just grab it pretty quick and, and go. I love the viewtainers uh, for just miscellaneous stuff, bolts and electrical push connectors and stuff like that to to keep on there amount of device because device is always good to have this bench is uh 16 feet front to back so that's a 16 foot long uh steel it's a it's 20 gauge sheet metal uh countertop so uh use that for you know working on stuff that's why i have the man door I know Ron's big on using the space for the man door and keeping everything small, but 90% uh, of the time when I'm working out of the trailer, I the doors in the back don't open. It's just uh, the side. I just use the side door and take my stuff in and out of the side door. And if I'm doing layout for sheet metal for doing ductwork or anything like that, I just do it right here. And all the projects, like my kids, like do derby cars or anything. Like that. Anything. This is my garage. It's just like a garage, so it gets used for all sorts of stuff um little bigger container down there i just i need to do something better at this section and you know make a, like another shelf or something find something better for the gas pipe but my shop back fits in there well um most of my miscellaneous nails i keep all my charged batteries down in these guys and then this is my little charging wall so uh you know i just throw the batteries on there when they need charged and it's all uh 120 volts so the trailer has to be plugged in to charge the batteries but I have enough batteries that it hasn't been a problem. Uh, keep my saws, my table saw and chop saw are just down there. You know, and I have that 
I forget what they call that track, but it's like a D-ring track or something. You can pop different brackets in and strap stuff down. This whole section back here still needs some love. It's kind of my... I uh, still don't know what I'm doing with section, so it's got just miscellaneous crap in it, like, you know, leftover wire and gloves and all that different stuff. So I do have some of these little snap lock bins from Home Depot, and that's got a bunch of miscellaneous PEX plumbing parts, you know, the bands and 90s and T's and stuff in it. Another set of sawhorses, some extra track pipe, just all sorts of random crap up there. Uh, the top shelf just has more parts up there, so, you know, doing HVAC work and remodel stuff, having some extra outlets and covers and all that's always handy. Uh, all my ACR copper and PVC for traps and drains and everything. Um, the lights that were in it, you know, of course are crap. So I ran these little Amazon special 12 volt LED strips, two down the middle and then one underneath the, the strip. And then I have like a extra one along the back and it does pretty good. The When I started the video, all the doors were closed. So it's pretty good light. So, coming to the back side of that, of course, the trash can down there. Uh, cubby, keep my uh, extension ladder and a eight foot ladder in, and then I have a sheet of half inch plywood and some some sheet metal back there for any miscellaneous stuff. This is that other five foot cubby, and then that ten foot cubby that runs the length. So, this big thing sideways here, that's a three foot sheet metal break, and I'm gonna see if I can put the camera down and show you how that uh works without dropping stuff or... oh hey speaking of vice i'll just throw it in the vice so Let's see if we can get that mark so whenever i'm doing sheet metal work this little guy unlocks up here and flips down so I can do my layout and then break what sheet metal I need to make. Most of the time it's just cans, you know, uh, base cans or a plenum or a small transition if I'm adding AC or something to somebody's house. So I don't do like full ductwork jobs with it. It's mostly just little on-site stuff, but it's a, it's a huge help. Makes it so I don't have to run to the parts house or have stuff fabbed for me. Um, but yeah, so I like that. It When I'm not using it, it just flips back up, locks in there, and travels well. So, that's the majority of it. If you guys have any other questions, please, you know, feel free to comment down there, and I'll uh, answer what I can answer. I think you guys have seen it all. Uh, my upper shelf there, just more tools and all that. So, thanks, Ron, for the inspiration. And uh, if you're ever on the east side of the state, shoot me a message and I'll, uh, I'll buy you lunch.